Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So today's video I am going to be working on some combinations. The pattern I am using is from Bustle Fashions 1885 to 1887 and the pattern I'm using is on page 30. So I'm going to be making the low necked combinations. Now if you don't have this book and you still want to make combinations like this there is actually a free pattern that's very similar to the one that I'm using on Pinterest and I'll link it down below and it is from the 1885 or 1888 ladies garments um, cutting book or something like that so I will leave a link to that down below if you wanted to make something similar so to make the patterns from this book I do have to use the apportioning rulers and they are just found in the back of the book Oops. And all my rulers are starting out. <laughs> okay, um, so they are just found in the back of the book. So to make up this pattern, I am using the uh, my bust measurement for the main portion of it. And then I'm also using my back length measurement times two to get the correct back length. It sounds a little bit confusing, but if you wanna learn more about that, I have a video on how to use the apportioning rulers and I will link it up above or down in the description. The fabric I'm using for this is 100% linen. I got this from a linen site in the States. I can't remember the name of it right now, but it was really decently priced, uh, I guess two years ago now. Anyway, so uh, I will leave a link for that if you are interested. It's the IL020. And then if you're in Canada and you're wanting linen, I definitely recommend Pure Linen Envy. I will leave a link for them as well. Their summer weight linen is delightful. So I am going to cut a length of linen and get that washing. And while it's washing, I can start working on the pattern. So let's get to it. With all the pieces cut out, I began by adding stay stitching along the neckline and armhole to keep the fabric from stretching while I worked with it. While this next step isn't really historically accurate, I say who really cares, and so I added a small piece of lightweight interfacing to the four corners of the combinations to reinforce the point to keep the fabric from fraying in the future. With everything remarked, it was time to start sewing things together. 
Beginning with the back pieces, I pinned and stitched together the back seam, and then I finished it with a felled seam for a clean, flat finish. Setting the back aside, it was time to start working on the front of the combinations. First, I pinned and then stitched these side darts in place. and then press the dart towards the back of the combinations. Once both sides were pressed, it was time to start on the legs. I used a French seam for this step for strength. Once the seams were pressed nice and flat, I then hemmed them with a simple double turned hem. In a couple examples, I've seen that tucks were used along the bottom of the combinations, so I decided to add those to mine. First, I measured up 2.5 inches from the bottom of the combinations and used a heat sensitive pen to mark the fold line. And then I stitched 5 eighths of an inch away from that line to create a nice tuck. After stitching, I then pressed it nice and flat and repeated the steps, except for this time I marked each tuck at 2 inches instead of 2.5 inches. Once the tucks were complete for each leg, I then sewed a simple double turn hem along the crotch line of the combinations. For those of you that don't know, the crotch of drawers and combinations were left open for easy bathroom access. Next up is the center front. This pattern has a placket finish included in the design for a nice clean finish. On the right side, I finger pressed all the raw edges and then folded it along the center front line for a nice clean finish. On the left side, I cut a second strip of fabric that was 2.5 inches wide and stitched it around the placket edge to create an extension for the buttons. With the plackets in place, it was time to attach both sides of the combinations together. Picking up the back piece from earlier, I pinned and stitched the back of the combinations together.
Once the back pieces were added, I then added gathering stitches to the top of the leg bum flap thing. I overlapped each side of the tush coverage by two inches at the center back, and then spread out the gathers evenly using a pin to stroke the gathers. I have done a quick try on of the combinations and I've discovered that this is way too low. So I'm going to bring this up about that much just to try and raise that up just a little bit to make it fit nicer and um, hopefully it'll all work. So time to get to seam ripping. After adjusting the back of the combinations and raising it up about an inch and a half, I finished the raw edge with bias tape to reinforce the back and to keep it from fraying in the future. I then pressed the bias tape upwards and stitched it in place. I then stitched the shoulder seam using a French seam. Once that was done, I pressed a narrow double turned hem along the neckline and along the armholes. And with the neckline done, I then stitched the plackets in place. So the majority of the combinations are done. It is ready for buttons and for trim. Now, I have several options for trim. Uh, I think I'm going to go with this one. But I have these ones as well. And while they are all really pretty and they'll have that like nice crochet look to them, uh, this is the only one that I have that I can put a ribbon through. So I think this is the option I'm gonna go with for around the neckline and around the shoulder, um, just because this does need to be tightened in a little bit. Now, I wasn't sure what color I wanted to go with for the ribbon. I have of uh, so fuchsia purple black and blue and then a light pink somewhere so i asked my patrons for their opinion and the popular choice was the blue one so that's the one i'm going to be adding into the neckline and then also around here so i still do need to add buttons I have these in my stash, but I only have the three. I'm definitely going to need more than that, but since the fabric stores are currently closed, I'm going to put that aside until later and work on the lace.
When I first put these on, I got major Seven Brides for Seven Brother vibes, and I just had June Bride playing in my head the entire time. And they are done! I love how these came out. They are so adorable and they are very comfortable. I was slightly worried that there wouldn't be enough room in the back for like bending over to pick stuff up, but there's ample room. Um, the, uh, the bagginess back here, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of room. So this is the second video, but I guess first step of creating an 1880s outfit. Um, so if you want to see the corset video, I will link that down below or you can click the link up above. I'm really excited to start working on the next piece in this series, which is going to be the bustle. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned and click subscribe so you don't miss it and it'll be out shortly. Now I would like to know, are you going to be making your own 1880s projects or are you just coming along for the ride? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye!